Welcome to the service clinic at Low Country Harley Davidson. I'm Doc Harley. Before we continue on with our 14 point inspection, safety inspection that you can do at home, I have to make a correction. On the first part, one through eight, I talked about tires. Well, it was brought to my attention that the triangles that are on your tire are the wear indicators made by the manufacturer. That means at that point in the tread, the manufacturer has raised some of the rubber. So when the outside has matched the inside of the tread, that's their indicator to tell you it's time to replace the tire. So we want to use our indicator not there. We want to put this somewhere else to check the tread depth. Okay, so triangles are manufacturer tread depth gauges that tell you when it's time to replace the tire when their mark is even with the outside tread of the motorcycle tire. That takes care of part one. Let's continue on with number eight in our 14 point safety inspection. Number eight brings us to inspecting the battery. Now we can do a nice quick or we can get in depth in checking the battery. Most batteries are covered by Harley-Davidson, but usually it takes just one screw to undo the seat or a cover, or on Sportsters, you can just pull the cover down and get to the battery. On this Dyna, we have a screw underneath that we can undo and take the cover off. Now, you need a tool to check the voltage. You need a tool, a 10 millimeter wrench to keep the bolts tight, and you need some type of meter to find out what the DC volts are of a battery. Now in the field we use a fluke meter but I have a little suggestion for you. Most motorcycles are connected to a battery tender. All right that's something we highly suggest here at Low Country Harley-Davidson. A battery tender helps give you the best efficient uh, work of your battery keeping it at the maximum voltage that it can be when it's sitting still. The battery tender is connected to the battery. All right, now to use the fluke meter, we need to undo the screw. And take off the cover. And here we have red covered up for positive and the negative here. Now with our fluke meter, we would hook up the leads. Battery tender offers an easier way, and I've used it several times, a battery tender meter. It's a digital meter. You unplug your cap on your battery tender, plug this in, and it tells our voltage, static voltage. Harley-Davidson would like to have 12.6, 12 12.8 to 12.6 as a static battery charge, battery ready to start your motorcycle. All right, so we've got 12.5. This motorcycle has been sitting for a couple of weeks. All right, so that's the first test on your battery. What's the static charge? Now, your battery bolts here, 10 millimeter. Please be cautioned when you are tightening. It's not a lot of torque on these bolts, but you have to be careful when you're tightening the positive side. I had a technician once have a longer 10 millimeter wrench, tightened the bolt, and this hit the frame. That's a direct short. It gets the wrench really hot and sparks go flying. So please, if you're going to tighten your bolts and to check to see if they're good and tight, just a little snug and make sure the other end isn't anywhere where it can touch the frame and be grounded. So we've got the static charge of the battery. We know what that is. Now the next point would be is to start your motorcycle, let it idle for a little bit, let the oils get circulated, then raise your RPM up to 2000 RPM and monitor your meter. Should be about 14 volts on the modern charging systems. On the older systems, you want one volt more than static. So if you're at 12.6, you want 13.6 for your voltage coming out of your charging system. Now, if your battery is weaker, of course, your maximum number is going to be weaker until it can charge the battery back up. So here's a nice little meter that you can keep in your pocket, in your tool bag, or in your garage that you can plug right in your battery tender and find out how your bike is doing charging wise. So that's point eight. We're seeing the condition of the battery. All right, so we're going on to number nine, checking your engine oil. Now, 
If your motorcycle is cold, you really are not getting the proper oil level, but at least it tells you you've got oil in your motorcycle and that's important to know. All right, so most areas, you've got a dipstick near the oil pan. And let me explain to those of you that do not own a Harley Davidson or possibly do not know, the Harley Davidson motor is called a dry sump motor. That means it does not keep the oil in the motor. It keeps it somewhere else on the Dyna, late model Dyna, the oil tank is underneath, underneath the transmission. On a Sportster, it's underneath the seat. On a Softail, it's underneath the seat. On a Touring model, it's under the transmission also. On late models, now earlier models on the Touring machine had it underneath the seat also. So it's a dry sump motor. So most of the oil is in the oil tank and not in the motor and the motor has some oil in it. So if it's cold, you're really not getting a good reading. The proper time to check your oil is after you ride. But for me, I like to at least know I've got oil in the oil tank and oil in the motorcycle motor. All right, as a technician, I don't know your motorcycle. So I at least want to know that there is some oil in it. Now, when you check your oil, when it's cold, you have two markings on it. You have on the jiffy stand and upright and that always comes up a question to me. Doc, how do I check my motorcycle? Is it upright or on the jiffy stand? Well, here's a little trick that I keep in mind. If the oil dipstick swivels, it's on the jiffy stand, side stand. If it's solid, upright. Hold your motorcycle upright and bring your dipstick out and check it. All right, on Sportsters, they've changed it. Both of them are upright, I mean stiff on the dipstick checker, all right? But here's the trick for you guys. If you have to push your dipstick down and twist it on the side stand, if it just pops right out from a rubber plug, upright, okay? Try to keep those tricks in mind for whatever kind of motorcycle you have. All right, as I said, your dipstick on modern motorcycles has two marks, one for jiffy stand, one for upright on it. And they give you a pretty good wide area to check. I like to at least see some oil on the dipstick halfway. All right. When I'm at operating temperature, I like to have a three quarters, not maximum. And many people have asked me, Doc, don't you want the most oil in it to keep it cool? Well, yes. But have you ever made a margarita? Have a blender, like to make a ninja something or whatever? You never fill it all the way to the top and put the cap on. You leave some area for air. And that's what I believe. If you have it at three quarters, by the time this motor starts churning up at 3,000 RPM up on the highway, it's probably up there on the full and I want some area for the air and oil to get around. So I keep it at three quarters. You can have it at the max. I have customers that like to have that. The main thing is when you're checking your oil when you're cold, you've got oil on the dipstick. The better way to check your oil is after your ride to the gas station or for the day when you get home, Put your bike on the side stand. If it is to be checked on the side stand, let it run for a minute. Let the oils all get nice and calm. Shut your motorcycle off. Take your dipstick out. Now be careful when you're getting to the dipstick, especially on a Dyna system that's right next to the exhaust system. Pull out your dipstick, wipe it clean, put it in all the way, screw it in, wait just a few seconds, pull it out. And when you pull it out, kind of keep it horizontal, all right? If you do this, it's kind of, on its way down already. So check your oil after it's warm. But I always like to check that there's oil when it's cold. All right, so that takes care of the checking the engine oil. Hey, we're right next to the next point. Let's check our air cleaner. Now this gentleman has opted for the high performance air cleaner, so it's easy to check. What are we checking for? Well, I take the rain sock off. That's needed on these if you get caught in the rain. <laughs> rain likes to be sucked up into it and the rain sock really works. So I keep this on me if I'm riding and you can keep it on 24 seven if you'd like. But on this one, you wanna make sure that you don't have some large debris leaves in it or you've got a lot of uh, dust or most of these start out at a nice charcoal gray and then they get darker and darker and darker until hey, it's time to clean them or replace it. All right, most air cleaners other than the high performance style, you have to get through with the cover. All right, on big motors, it's a nice 5 16 Allen. All right. On most Sportsters, it's a 3 16 Allen. 
and some of the earlier style was a big Phillips screwdriver. Okay. What we do is you take the two screws out or the single screw and you inspect it. All right, now you see this one. It's almost brand new. White, grayish, looks good all the way around. This one here has, has about 20,000 miles on it. I got leaves, I'm pretty dark, and I've got some oil on the bottom here. Well, Harley Davidson has designed the air cleaner to help in the breathing system of the motorcycle. It has these two little tubes, all right? It's connected to each cylinder, and that lets the motor breathe out and in, out and in. Well, when you're breathing in and out and you've got oil going all over, you get a little mist of oil and air. Well, the air comes into the air filter, back into the motor. The oil kind of falls down and accumulates here. Well, when it gets all full, then it starts dripping a little bit. All right, Harley-Davidson suggests that you replace the air filter every 10,000 miles. Now, if you live on a country road or you drive aggressively and all that, you might have to check it a little more often. The dirtier it is, the harder it is for your motorcycle to perform. Keeping your air filter clean and keeping your oil clean helps keep your Harley-Davidson running as smooth as possible and for a longer time. So check your air filter. It doesn't take much. Buy yourself a little Allen set at Sears or anywhere you can. And all you need is those two sizes for most of the motorcycles in your garage. Take it off, take a look on it, put a little blue Loctite on the screw, put it back in and you're done. All right, it's good to keep an eye on it. Especially if you ride a lot more and you just can't get into the service clinic to have your air filter checked at 10,000 miles and you're about to go on a trip, the dirtier this air filter is, the less gas mileage you get. Uh, yeah, that's kind of nice to do if you're going on a long trip. So we took care of the inspecting the air cleaner. Our next point at number 11 is inspect the exhaust system. I can't stress enough, we're right here. Check it when it's cold. This gets really, really hot. This gentleman here has covered it for two reasons. One, exhaust wrap kind of brings back the old school look, and two, it kind of helps with the heat with your leg coming across to the foot. But anyway, checking the exhaust system. All we're wanting to do is make sure that the mounts are all tight. Yes, you can take a flashlight and take a look at the bolts to make sure, but what I do when it's cold is I move things. All right, everything feel tight or do I hear a little metal? Do I hear a little give or something like that? Let's keep an eye on the exhaust system because it moves a lot and it goes through a lot. It goes from zero, way over 300 degrees and back down again. All right, it's always moving in and out on its expansion of the metal. So it's good to just keep an eye on it or listen. If you start hearing a little metal ting, 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 check it when it's cold, all right? Just use your hands. It doesn't take a tool here. If you think you feel something, then grab a tool. 9 16 half inch usually does it. And the shields are usually a screwdriver, a flat tip screwdriver. Just give it a little tightness to keep the shields going. They're usually stainless steel clamps. Don't come apart very easily, but they can use a little tweaking once in a while. So we've checked the exhaust system. Make sure the mounts are all tight on it. So that takes care of number 11. Engine mounts and isolators. This is kind of a difficult thing for you. What I want you to do is just Find them, look at them, and put a mental note in it. How does it look, all right? This one here, the Dyna system, has a big rubber mount up front and two in the back. Very hard to see on the back, but the front one, you can kind of keep an eye on. And you can kind of look at it and go, hey, everything looks the same. And then one day, all of a sudden, you go, wait a minute, rubber looks a little saggy. Something's moved a little bit. I better bring it in to Low Country Harley Davidson Service Clinic and have them take a look at it. My ride seems to be getting a little more bumpier at idle or going down the road. Just your eyesight, just your visual inspection of the rubber mounts on your motorcycle, on touring machines, sportsters, and on dynas. Soft tails don't have any rubber mounting system to check, but keep an eye on it. Once you see something that's unusual, bring it in. We don't mind taking a look at it with our professional eyes and saying, yeah, let's measure that. Or, no, that's fine. That's just in the age of the motorcycle. A Dyna, it makes a big difference with the front rubber. You'll see the motor start to sag on top of the rubber, and then your ride gets a little more vibration. A brand new rubber mount on a Dyna makes all the difference in the world. On the early Touring models that had a three-point rubber system, one in the front, two in the back, the front one makes a big difference, new or old. If you have an older touring machine with a single rubber here, maybe take a look at it. See if the motor's kind of sagging on it and your ride could be a lot smoother with the new updated rubber there. So let's 
We've taken a look at the engine mounts and isolators. Let's move around to the other side of the motorcycle and check the last two items. Checkpoint number 13, second to the last. The Jiffy Stand, or Side Stand, or Kick Stand. Many different names for the same thing. It's what holds up your motorcycle. Now there are two things to keep, well three things to look at when you're at the Jiffy Stand. One, does it work right? When I let go of it, does it go back where it's supposed to go? There's a very big shock when a side stand stays out and you go into a left turn out of your driveway. Whoa, gets a little scary. So you want to make sure that the spring is working to its full capacity. I do have seen springs that are at half life and they bring it to here. They don't bring it all the way back up to the frame. We need it to go all the way to the frame. And that brings up our second item to look on the Jiffy Stand, kick stand or side stand. That's the rubber. On Dyna's, they have a rubber mount underneath it. It's connected to the frame, pops in. This item always moves on a Dyna. For some reason from the side stand kicking it or when you go into a turn or something always moves this and you'll know it because when you let the Jiffy Stand come back, whoa, gets really loud. I've had customers come in, Doc, my motor's about to fall apart, man. It's making a lot of noise, the bottom end. No, it just means that your rubber moved, okay? On the Dynas, the rubber's on the frame. Check it, make sure that it's positioned correctly and stopping the side stand. On most touring machines, it's made into the Jiffy stand. It's part of it, and they wear also. And Sportsters have rubber mounts also to be checked. So, Jiffy stand, make sure that it retracts completely. Check for the rubber, make sure that it's in its proper place and in good condition so you're not hearing this death knock all the time. And then on touring machines and on some Sportsters, you can actually see the mounting bolt. It's a half inch on some, 11 sixteenths on others. Just get the wrench and just give it a snug. Make sure that the mounting bolt is on tight. Dyna systems have a pin underneath with other areas of making it stay in place. So you have to almost get it up on a jack and look underneath and make sure everything's connected. Very rare they come apart, but it's a good thing to keep an eye on. Main thing for you at home, make sure this comes up and down. Now, I'm gonna sound silly, but let's check this with you on the motorcycle or somebody holding the motorcycle, all right? I don't need for you to hold it up, let go, and motorcycle come down. All right, let's put some sense in checking the jiffy stand by yourself with you sitting on the motorcycle and kicking it back and forth or have somebody help you, all right? That's almost the last. The last item here is an overall look for leaks, all right? You wash your motorcycle. You know your motorcycle better than I will ever know your motorcycle. Everything looks dry and nice. Number one place to look, your fuel line. Do I have the rubber starting to dry rot and we're starting to leak? Is the connection at the tank starting to leak? Is it leaking at carburetors near the carburetor or is a fitting at the fuel injection starting to leak? That is really important to keep an eye on. Leaks in the fuel system, other leaks, oil leaks. Do I have an oil leak starting to weep here at the base cylinders or the rocker boxes? Or can I take my hand underneath this area? Does it come dry? Yeah, you might have a little road grime once in a while, but is it oily? If I start to feel some oil here, it's time to bring it into the service clinic and let's have a look at it and get that oil fixed before it starts getting really bad and stops your weekend. All right, so we've completed the 14-point safety inspection. It's what we do every time your motorcycle comes in. But if you'd like to do it, you can at your house, and I highly suggest it, because the more you know your motorcycle, the safer it is and the better we can keep it running for a long, long time. I'm Doc Harley. We'll see you next week.